Hi, my name is Hadley Hillel, and I am a writer and director from Seattle, Washington, currently based out of Los Angeles. My short film, Ernie, is this week's film of the week. Ernie is about a lonely old man whose attempt to hang himself goes awry, ripping a hole in the ceiling and causing him to form a friendship with the young boy who lives above. The story required us to cut a hole in the floor of an apartment building, and so we knew from the get-go that we were going to have to build the set from scratch. But given our limited resources, we knew we couldn't afford to do it traditionally and would have to get creative. So as both the director and production designer of the piece, the challenge was figuring out how to take advantage of those limitations and stylize the world in a way that still served the story. I always try to build unique worlds around my characters to help put the audience in their shoes, and I knew it was important to visually communicate how isolated Ernie feels. Eventually, I settled on building all the sets out of cardboard because it felt like the perfect way to communicate that concept. The material was cheap, and the juxtaposition between live action actors and such a dull, bland backdrop really underscored how disconnected Ernie felt from the world around him. So I'm going to talk a little more about why I decided on cardboard, the opportunities that that choice presented us with narratively, and how we actually went about constructing the sets. So choosing cardboard ended up making the most sense both emotionally and actually logistically as well. Uh, to me, the most important part of building a world is making sure that every aesthetic and stylistic choice serves the character. When we meet Ernie, his days are blending together, and he's lost his will to live. Everything is sort of bland. And so I started thinking about ways to visually separate Ernie from the world around him, and came up with the idea of making everything out of the same material. And so I started thinking about different textures and colors, and ultimately landed on cardboard, mostly just because it's so kind of readily available and cheap. Um, but the color also played a big part in that, just because it's so neutral and dull that, you know, it felt like the perfect way to underscore the idea of this monotonous world around him. Creating such a flat, repetitive world gave us the opportunity to make any non-cardboard items really stand out from the background, which allowed us to place emphasis on certain items that were important to the story. We were very intentional about which items we made exceptions for, so that only those that were absolutely essential to Ernie's character arc made the cut. For example, the red yarn is Ernie's coping mechanism from his childhood. It's what he did to stay calm when his parents were fighting, and it has since become his job and his livelihood, so quite literally, it's his lifeline. Uh, and so that's why we decided to make it such a vibrant, standout color in the cardboard world. The white milk cartons represent a comfort food from Ernie's childhood, so we wanted them to be a bit more vibrant than the usual brown, but we didn't want them to stand out too much. So that's how we landed on white. Lastly, the pink gum is the second most vibrant color used in the film because it represents the boy, who ultimately gives Ernie a reason to continue living. So the process of actually building the cardboard world was a pretty insane undertaking. Uh, it took 20 plus volunteers, more than two weeks to build everything, and every single prop had to be meticulously crafted from scratch and by hand. Uh, and I think one of the most interesting parts for me, just as a production designer, was that I had complete control over every single aspect of every prop or item that was brought in because we were building it all. So anything that I could imagine could become a reality, which allowed some really cool stylization. Another interesting thing that came up was that props needed to be weighted correctly because we obviously wanted them to look like they were the real deal. And so I know that there were a couple issues, one with the alarm clock where it just would kind of flop over like a piece of paper. And so we had to put some weight in it so that when Ernie hit it, it actually looked like it had a little heft to it. Funny enough, it was actually surprisingly difficult to find the quantity of cardboard we needed. So on weekends at the very end of kind of construction, we would end up diving into industrial recycling bins and kind of grabbing as much cardboard as we could before people would kick us off the premises. So I learned to make films by stealing my dad's Panasonic home video camera at the age of seven. And then I continued to make films through middle school and through high school and ultimately went to Chapman University to study directing. I don't think a film school education is necessary to learn filmmaking. I think I learned the most from just trial and error, mostly error. Uh, but I'd say that if you do go to film school, the biggest thing is just making sure that you 
sort of give it your all because you really do get out of it what you put into it. I think my biggest advice is to use any limitations that come your way as an opportunity and sort of look for the silver lining. I think it's also really important to try to create a visual language for your film that highlights what's thematically important. Ernie's obviously a very straightforward example since everything's cardboard except the symbolic elements, but I think every movie does a version of that. I would just recommend looking at ways to use color or other tools to make those items really stand out. After finishing my studies at Chapman, I signed with Echo Lake Entertainment and have since been developing my first feature. It's a psychological fantasy thriller based on a 2017 short I made. And I also have a couple other projects in development, including a limited series set in the Jetsons' future and a few other features. So definitely some exciting stuff coming up.